Lord willing, we'll come back to that text at the very end of the message. I, I have said that before and forgotten, so hopefully I won't do that again. But the title of the message, uh, well, let's say this. This is kind of part of a series. Uh, last Sunday, we talked about your family in your church. Today, the idea is your family in your home. But I would attach to that this, uh, this title, Reducing Tension in Your Home. Reducing tension in your home. And that's what the message is about. I brought a rubber band here, a couple of them, just for, just for backup sake here. And you know what I mean by tension? I started to bring a guitar. And if you've ever tuned a guitar, you'll turn, tune those strings and you're touching it and, and you're tighten, tighten, tighten. It gets to this point where you're like, Really afraid to tighten it anymore because it's going to go darn, and you're going to bust a string, which happens all the time. And so you understand the idea of, of tension. And if I were to just keep on pulling this until we just know that at any second it's going to pop and, you know, I don't want to do it. But, you know, it builds that, that tension. There's a lot of stress there. There's a lot of, uh, you know, pressure. You don't know when it's going to break. This is what I mean by, by tension, okay? This is a great picture. I want to come back to that uh, illustration. But the idea of having a happy home, having a home that, you know, just can walk with the Lord and be at peace and uh, not have a whole lot of this tension, it's going to have to do, uh, it, it, it's, it's really no great secret, but it's going to have to do with following the Bible and basically, the Bible always comes down to what's the greatest thing that the Bible always talks about. The greatest thing is charity or love, right? There's synonyms there, but uh, charity is uh, is the idea, okay? So <clears throat> here's the thing about a stressful home. And praise the Lord, I didn't really, I didn't grow up, I, I wouldn't say I grew up in a stressful home, obviously, there was the occasional fighting, the occasional, you know, uh, some sort of stress. I'm sure went through a time in my life where my uh, my parents were on the the edge of divorce, and so there was a lot of fighting. And as kids, I do remember that being there being a lot of tension. And actually, after they got saved, got in church, and everything, that started to kind of smooth out. Didn't really feel a whole lot of tension in the home. I felt like I had a pretty relaxed how you know life growing up and. Uh, they loved the Lord. There was love. We loved each other, cared about each other. So praise the Lord, I never had to experience that. Um, you know, like I said, some tension was there, but 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 not a whole lot. And in my house, since I've been married, uh, you know, I haven't ever felt like there's a whole lot of stress and, and all that. But here's what I've noticed that in the world, as you look around and you talk to people, being in children's ministries for a long time and talking to the kids that, you know, they're telling you more than more than you want to know about their, their home life. You know, there's a lot of tension and stress. And I've never worked in public schools, but if you're in public schools much around kids, I'm sure they will tell you, uh, you, you know, you talk to people that are around that and they'll say there's you can tell this kid's got a lot of stress at home. And, you know, stress in the house will lead to bad health. Right. It affects the way that you sleep not getting a lot of sleep because there's maybe fighting, there's stress, can't sleep because you're thinking about all these kinds of things. Uh, ulcers people will get, uh, they'll get headaches or uh, various problems, health-related problems because of this tension in the home. And uh, here's what will happen when there's a lot of stress, you want to get rid of stress, what a lot of times they'll do, they want to get out of the home, you know. Uh, you've probably seen places where there's a lot of stress, there's fighting, whatever. So someone will just slam the door and they'll get out. I'm going wherever. I'm going for a walk or I'm going out with my friends or I'm going somewhere. And they go and they're hoping to get rid of that stress. But usually what happens is they actually take that stress with them. And so now they're carrying that with them because it's so unhealthy and they take that. And the next thing you know, they're taking that to work and, they're, and their, their work, their peers at work can sense the tension you know, their boss, you know, you've, you've been to work where your boss must have had a bad day or something like that. And so he's passing it on to everybody else. And, and I think you can, you can tell what, I, what I'm talking about here with this tension and this stress and, and what it'll cause. It'll cause kids to not get a good education because they're not focused, they're not thinking. Uh, certainly it'll, 
it'll hinder your productiveness and getting things done. And then in a Christian home, it'll definitely hinder your walk with the Lord or your ability to uh, get a lot accomplished in the name of the Lord. These are some problems that we have by having the tension in the home. And so I want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, basically breaking down uh, Colossians 3 and Ephesians 6, you know, it goes through the family. There's a lot of places in the Bible and, and uh, Peter, uh, 2 Peter talks about this and, and just breaking down the, the, the relationships in the home, the fathers and the wives and the children, the servants. A lot of times houses holds back then used to have servants and, and uh, it would break down these different areas, tell you your responsibilities. We'll come to some of those verses here in a minute. But the point number one is uh, I would uh, like to address the fathers, okay? So fathers in the home, don't be a father who creates tension, right? Don't be a father. And maybe, you know, that stress from work and it comes home and you're, you got that stress and that tension, you know, you don't want to be the type that brings that home. It's going to happen. It's going to happen sometimes. We don't live in a perfect world. We all mess up and I'll, I'll deal with that here at the end of the message as well. But you don't want to bring that to your home, all right, or, uh, or any kind of problems like that. You don't want to be a, a father who in his house is creating a lot of tension, okay? How about tension with their wives, okay? Uh, remember back in 1 Samuel 25, we talked about this. I guess it was on Thursday. 1 Samuel 25, we talked about David and Abigail. Look at verse 17. 1 Samuel 25, verse 17. Now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his household. For he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. All right? Pig-headed. <laughs> so, you know, you can't talk to him. He's just, he's just, a, he's somebody who you can't talk to. He's not reasonable and, uh, and he's not, you're not getting anywhere whenever you talk to him. Look, don't be that kind of man who, when you, you're at your household, it's just like, oh, just don't even talk to him. He's got a short fuse. He's going to explode. Yeah, I had a lot of friends like that growing up. And, uh, and it was just kind of like, I don't even want to ask my dad. I don't even want to mess with him right now. Like he's always on the edge and, and all that. And I'm thinking, what a terrible home life to go there and to know that your dad, the head of the household is just constantly got this bottled up tension and you don't even want to talk to him. And I thought about that when it talks about, uh, Nabal and how he was churlish. If you're here on Thursday, we talked about that a little bit. Now imagine his wife, you know, can't talk to him. Nobody can talk to him. He's just going to do his own thing. He's, he doesn't, he, he doesn't uh, uh, care about other people's needs or anything. So you've got his wife and the story of, you know, Abigail is just going around trying to like take care. She's trying to protect her household, protect her family from the destruction that's about to come on them because of the husband. And so she's going, there are several stories in the Bible I could point to that I'm thinking in my head, but, uh, but she's got to kind of go behind his back and try to you know, take things into her own hands because her husband's just causing all these problems and he's causing all this stress. You don't want to be that kind of man. You don't want to be that kind of husband. Now, in, in a, a healthy family relationship, a biblical, after the biblical pattern of, you know, the man's head of the house and he's going out and he's, and he's working and the wife's taking care of the home and raising the children and all that, we all agree in here, I think that that's the biblical um, role. I think that all of us would agree that a woman has actually a, a pretty hard enough job caring for the children, taking care of the home. Children can be stressful, I'm sure, I've been told, <laughs> on the wives. I bet the Thompsons know a little bit <laughs> about that. You'll have to hear that story uh, after church. <laughs> but uh, uh, sometimes children can bring extra stress and the woman could be really you know, she's bothered by that. She's trying to do right. And the husband comes home and he's kind of expecting, you know, uh, the food to be done or the house to be cleaned or maybe to, you know, that his wife's going to be there for him or something like that. Not really thinking about the fact that she's had a rough time and she's, uh, you know, been under all this stress. 
You know, sometimes men don't think about that. Sometimes men are, are very self-centered and they're dealing with their own, you know, life and their own tensions that they've had. Like I said, outside, maybe at work or whatever, maybe the stress of finances or the stress of, of uh, different things going on. And they would sometimes take that to the home and cause that tension to be passed on to the wife. And then, uh, and, and then it's just going to cause all kinds of problems. Women have a hard enough time already dealing with that situation. It would be bad enough for the husband, the father to come in and make that situation worse. <clears throat> okay. Uh, a couple things that guys uh, should do, I believe in helping in that situation is maybe be willing to help out a little bit when it's needed. You know, I find myself sometimes I'm guilty of coming home and just wanting to relax and being like, hey, that's not my job. You know, those are I don't do dishes at my house, but I could at least clean my plate <laughs> before I put it in there or something. Yeah, I can at least see there's any little things to be thinking of. Hey, how can I help this situation? Uh, you don't want to be the husband that comes home and, you know, doesn't even care about the wife who has some certain things that maybe she'd like to get off her chest and she'd like to talk to the husband a little bit about that. Now, look, we've been there. I, I know I've, I've been in times in my life where, uh, you know, I'm working three jobs, you know, not getting a whole lot of sleep, come home from work and I'm thinking, well, it's just not fair. Why should I do all this? I don't actually think this, but you know, it'd be easy to think like, why don't I get more attention? You know, I've been working hard. I've been doing this, but sometimes we forget that while we were out doing that, the wife was at home dealing with certain other disasters at home or situations. And she wants to talk about that and get a little off her chest. She'd been dealing with kids all day long. And now she wants to talk and have a, a human adult uh, time wants to talk to them. and sometimes men don't understand that they don't think about that but the Bible says that we ought to love our wives enough to get to know them and to dwell with them according to knowledge and uh, we should learn them and understand them and be able to talk with them that would be a huge load off of the wife and cause a little bit of less uh, her to have a little less tension there now look at Ephesians 6 4 the Bible also talks about men Having, uh, causing tension on the children. Sometimes a father can cause tension on the children. Ephesians 6, 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Similar passage in our text that uh, was read, Colossians 3. Colossians 3, 21. Instead of wrath, it says anger, similar word here. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Okay, so you have there the idea of, of discouraging them, or, uh, or what, did chapter, uh, what did chapter 6 say? Uh, uh, not provoking them unto wrath. You know, the idea that the children are under a lot more stress than you might think they would be. And sometimes they're carrying that stress and they don't want the husband, the, the father to come home and maybe he's got too high expectations on them. Maybe he's mean or, uh, or abusive or just has a lack of care and love, uh, you know, or sometimes this children crave you. It, it'd be hard to kind of, interview a child and, and, and hear them tell you this in their own words, but children actually crave uh, discipline and structure. You know, uh, we, we learned this in the children's ministry as well. Again, not our own children, but children who at home didn't get any attention, didn't get any even correction. You know what I mean? It was just kind of like, hey, you live your own life. We'll live our own life. It seems like the kids didn't have a whole lot of investment from the parents in, in their life. And so then they would come to church and I remember like they would just, because they were troublemakers, they'd be getting, uh, you know, yelled at all the time. They'd be disciplined, you know, sent to the, uh, you know, what well, we had a place uh, in Oklahoma City is called growth class and the troubled kids would be sent to this other class. And, and those, <laughs> anyway, it's a, we had some, we had some troublemakers, that's for sure. But I remember thinking this, like, what is causing these kids to keep coming back to church? I mean, they come, they get in trouble, you know, they get yelled at, they're forced to sit down and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, why do they keep coming back? It doesn't seem like they're here to learn anything. It doesn't seem like they're here like to contribute anything to the Lord, to the Lord. Right. And only the only thing I could think of is they're actually getting some sort of attention. 
They're getting some sort of affection, somebody in their life that cares about them and, 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 is, and is trying to get them to behave. And, and I believe sometimes uh, we don't think that kids want that, but I think they actually do. This is why a lot of teenagers will leave the house and be like, I'm going to join the military, right? And the military will provide them with some structure and some discipline. That's why kids will go will join a gang, right? That gang will provide them with some sort of, uh, of attention, obviously the worst kind of attention that they can get, but uh, it'll be some kind of a family there, some kind of an attention that they're getting. And kids actually crave the training. So actually when parents invest time in making sure the kids are learning things and they're growing and they're behaving and they're instituting laws and all that. Now look, yes, kids, whenever they're kids, they're going to be like, no, 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 we don't want you know, discipline. We don't want to be, you know, we don't want that training and all that stuff, but they do. And then they get older, they're thankful for that. Okay. So all this is, is things that we do to invest. We talked about investing in family. Uh, uh, I guess that was an Iola, sorry, we, about investing in family. Uh, and what, what we want to invest in our family so that we can, we can have good health. We can have good, uh, you know, where we get a lot accomplished and we're doing th great things for the Lord because we're taking away that tension. We're reducing tension. It starts with men, okay? Men are the head of the house. Uh, talked about this morning in Iola about Jesus being the captain of our salvation. And the captain, you know what the captain is. He's the, he's the head. He's the one that's leading the charge, all right? He's leading the army. They're going to follow his lead. If he says charge and he goes running towards uh, the enemy, they're going to follow with him. And this is what the head of the house needs to, to be, the person who leads the house and says, okay, we're going to go this way. And it starts with the father to say, you know what? We're going to have a home that is tension free. We're going to have a home that is productive and, and, and we're able to accomplish something for the Lord and we're going to be healthy and we're going to be happy and we're going to be, uh, uh, you know, stress free. It starts with the husband. Okay. Now, what about the wife? Number two, wives, don't be a wife who creates tension. All right. In the home. Solomon seemed to, to like talking about this subject, all right? And he talks about in the book of Proverbs about women who are brawling, women who are contentious, women who are angry. If you've got a thousand wives, you're going to meet some of these. And, <laughs> and so he obviously had some experience in this area, okay? Look at chapter, uh, Proverbs 27. Proverbs 27, and verse 15. A continual dropping in a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. <laughs> I mean, uh, Solomon, did, you know, he had some pretty neat pictures <laughs> in the subject. You know what I mean? A, a continual dropping. You ever, maybe you're like trying to sleep or maybe you're trying to think about some, sometimes I'm studying and in the background you hear this. And for a while you're like, okay, no big deal. And, after, and then you're like, what is that? <laughs> and then next thing you know, you're trying to, you're just like, oh, I got to get away from that. You're plugging cotton in your ears or something. And uh, that drip, con constant dripping, dripping. I've been told, you've heard it called Chinese torture. I don't know if that's true or not, but I've been told that they used to use that as a technique to torture people, right? That constant dripping, the constant dripping, constant dripping. You know what he's talking about when he says, a, he's talking about a wife who's just a, like a constant drip. We would use the word nag, right? A wife who's just constantly pressuring her husband and talking to her husband and trying to get him, you know, uh, on, to, on to something. Now, we already talked about reducing the tension in the home starts with the husband. Okay, husbands, what you could do is do some of those things that she keeps nagging you about, right? But the idea is that women, it's not helping the tension factor if you just keep on uh, being a, uh, uh, like a, like a dripping, he's talking about, okay. A man doesn't want to come home, maybe from the responsibilities of his work or uh, whatever. He wants to come home and to be a peaceful place. He doesn't want to come home and have fighting and contentions and all that. Look what the Bible says. Look at chapter 21. It says about now, and this isn't even talking about the children who, you know, don't have a choice but to hear that all day long. But the husband, from Solomon's perspective, 
A man would rather dwell in the wilderness than be in that situation. Look at Proverbs 21, 19. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. Look at chapter 25, verse 24. It says, He would rather hide in the corner of the rooftop than be with a contentious woman. Chapter 25, verse 24. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wide house. All right? You can uh, uh, just be in there with that little bitty corner, that little bitty spot right there without having all the stress and the tension would be more enjoyable than having a huge house but have that uh, contentious woman. Chapter 17. Chapter 17. Now, I think, I think it goes a long way when a woman knows how to cook. It really does. <laughs> men, like, men like to eat, right? And they like food. But, you know, it doesn't matter how good a woman cooks. You know, he would rather, according to the Bible, look at verse 1. Better is a dry morsel and quietness therein than a house full of sacrifices with strife, right? Instead of eating that steak and that gourmet meal or whatever, he just wants quiet. He would rather just be in a, <laughs> have a time of quiet and eat just uh, this dry morsel, right? Rather than to be with this kind of a situation. Again, it's that tension. And maybe all, maybe all men aren't the same, but I'm pretty sure most men just like to not have tension. They want to have the peace. But guess what? The women actually do too. <laughs> they want peace too. So men, you know, we don't want to cause the, the stress and the tension in the home. Women don't add to the stress and the tension in the home. And then children. Children can create obviously some tension and some stress in the home. Uh, you know, just a couple things. There's a lot of verses we can turn to, but uh, you know they're in the Bible. Let me just uh, give you a few points here. Obey your parents. The Bible says that over and over, right? Obey your parents. And uh, when they don't do that, boy, it makes it hard on the parents. Now I'm going to have to discipline. Now I'm going to have to, you know, uh, get upset with them or whatever. The children can actually stop that from happening. If they would just do what their parents tell them to do, uh, it would avoid a lot of tension, you know. <clears throat> children, uh, honor the wishes of your parents. Even after you leave the house, you know, uh, when you leave the house, they're no longer your, your, your boss, so to speak, you know, girls. And once you get married, you've been handed off to the husband. You're now his responsibility. And men, when you leave the home, you're starting your own house. You're no longer under your mother and father, but you cleave into your wife. The Bible makes that very clear. And uh, you're the head of your own household. Yes, but you still want to honor your mother and father. Can you imagine just going off and living a lifestyle completely contrary to what your mother and father want of you? And that causes them in their house, even though you don't live there anymore, to be a constant tension and stress, just thinking about their kids who maybe aren't living for the Lord. I'm thinking about Job. You know, Job talks about how he was going and, and, and giving sacrifices and praying, you know, that God, just in case his kids were out there committing some kind of wickedness, which I suspect that he, he had good reason to believe that they probably were. And so he's praying and he's asking that God will forgive him because he's constantly thinking about his, you know, they're out partying and feasting and all this kind of stuff. And he's thinking, that's not what I want for my kids. No matter how much you invest in your kids, it's possible for them to leave the house and they go out and go against your wishes. You know, I'm thinking about uh, uh, Isaac, I mean, uh, uh, Jacob. Jacob goes out and he gets the, the wrong type of a woman. He marries the women that, that they were told not to. You know, back Abraham said, don't go after uh, the children of the, of the, uh, of the, the Canaanites. And sure enough, uh, he goes, Jacob goes, I mean, not Jacob, uh, Esau, sorry. Esau goes and he marries a Hittite, right? He's one of the Canaanites. And, uh, and this is, it was grievous to his parents. You know, his parents, they, they hurt them in their heart because he was going after the wrong kind of 
uh, of a woman. And, and look, I've seen this happen in good godly men my whole life. Pastors, preachers, missionaries, whatever. They've, they've lived for the Lord. They've served the Lord. They've tried to invest in their kids. They've tried to do right. We all make mistakes, no doubt about it. They, they didn't do everything perfectly in the home. But then those kids grow up and they leave the house and they're living, living this terrible life you know, uh, uh, committing all kinds of uh, sins and being an embarrassment to the family. And that's a grief on that, on that family, in that household. And the parents are just constantly, here we are serving the Lord and our child, you know, is, is, is living this, this life. So I've always told my kids, you know, I believe a qualification of the pastor is to have his house in order, right? Read uh, in, in 1 Timothy and in Titus, he says the qualifications of the bishop is one that ruleth his house well and has his children in subjection. Can you imagine, you know, the stress that I would have if my kids were just, they had this reputation of being just these, these rebellious kids. I didn't have, it, they didn't, it didn't look like I had my house in order and they were doing us. And I've told them often, if you don't want your dad to be in the ministry, you know, it would be real easy for you guys to get me disqualified, all right? But don't do that. I don't need that kind of tension. You know, I don't need that kind of stress. And praise the Lord, I, I don't feel like I have a whole lot of tension at home. So, so that's, a, that's a wonderful thing. But children can do that. Children can cause that. How about this, especially when you're raising children and you're in public and they don't behave themselves. That's, a, that's stressful on the parents, right? They're embarrassed. <laughs> they, they love you, but they're embarrassed, and they don't want you to be doing that. They don't want you to be misbehaving in public. And so uh, there's, that, there's that thing, you know. You go, when your kids go out, with somebody, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a situation, but they, they just go out with somebody else and you're thinking, I wonder what they're saying. I wonder what they're, what they're talking about. Because kids do. I already mentioned how kids will, will just tell you all about their home life and everything that goes on at home. And, and, uh, and sometimes you're like, oh, don't tell me that, <laughs> you know. But, you know, I always think about that when my kids, I'm like, what are they saying? What are they talking about? Well, hopefully there's not a whole lot to hide. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to hide anything. But you feel that tension, that stress, like, what are they doing? And what if you find out that your kids are just embarrassing you and they're saying all these things and they're doing all these things? So there's tension, all right? We want to reduce the, the tension in our house. Kids don't go around complaining about everything. We had this saying growing uh, when they were when we were raising the kids. Uh, I mean, I guess we'll go through it again with Viviana, but we had this saying: "You get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. You get what you get, and you don't throw a fit." We said that all the time <laughs> because we want our kids to learn, you know, that you just accept some things, and uh, and even if you don't like it, you go ahead and accept it, and that brings peace. Because once you start complaining, it's not going to help anything, right? They're just going to make you sit at that table and eat it anyway. <laughs> Maybe even eat it for breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so uh, so don't complain. Just it, just do the best you can to take away the tension. All right. Now, having said all that, fathers, wives, children, your responsibility, all right? We don't want we don't want the tension. How can we we relieve that a little bit? Give us some relaxing room, all right? But here's the 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 reality is as Christians, we better be able to tolerate some tension. We better be strong enough. We got to learn how to how to how to be strong enough to endure some tension because you know what? We might not want tension, but it's always going to be there. It's always going to find itself somewhere. There's some if if we don't if we're not strong enough to to bear tension, then uh, then it's just you know we're 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 out of luck because it's going to be everywhere. So as Christians, the Bible actually has a lot to say about how we need to be willing to tolerate that tension. It doesn't matter if you're the child, the wife, the father. You can reduce tension in your home if you try. You can reduce tension when you feel the tension. You can reduce that. What can I do to lighten the load a little bit and to reduce some of the tension so that you can have a happy home? <clears throat> In 1 Corinthians 6, verse 7, it says, Now therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not take uh, rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Now he's talking to the church and he's saying, Look, uh, this is in uh, 1 Corinthians 6. 
And he's saying, you know, you and as a church body, you need to be judging among yourselves and taking care of some of these matters. Why would you go to the world? Why would you go to there, right? And so he's saying, as Christians, you know, sometimes you need to judge within yourselves. But then he's saying also, why won't you just allow yourself occasionally be occasionally to be defrauded, right? Now, the idea of following the commandments, the idea of, of living a good godly life and not getting in trouble with God or not getting in trouble with the law even is just not defrauding people, right? Don't steal from somebody. That's defrauding them. If you love them, don't do that. Do, do unto them as you would have them do unto you, right? Don't, uh, uh, you know, don't talk bad about somebody behind their back. Don't tell a false truth, bear false witness on somebody because that's defrauding them, right? But the fact of the matter is we have to, as Christians, not only be on the aggressive of, of not defrauding somebody else, but sometimes we got to be willing to let them defraud us. Now, that's not popular. No one wants that. But you know what that will do is that will relieve the tension, okay? Because if, if there's tension and then you jump in the matter and say, well, I don't like being defrauded, so you add tension, then eventually it's going to pop. And you guys are waiting for this to pop, but I'm not going to do it because that would hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't want all this contention, so we're doing our best to avoid some contention. That goes a, 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 quite a bit along with what I was talking about the other day about being diplomatic, which wasn't a popular message, but uh, this, uh, uh, this is the reality. What we're supposed to do as Christians, allow ourselves sometimes to be defrauded. So go back to our text here, Colossians 3. Colossians 3, here's the secret. Having a Christian family and, uh, and having peace in your home, relieving the, reducing the tension in your home. Here are some of the, the secrets. Number uh, Verse 2, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. You know, if you're looking at, to Christ and, and He's the Lord and He's your life, you're, you're going to allow things to... to roll down your back, so to speak, and you not, not cause you all this grief and tension because it's not a big deal in the scheme of, in, in the, compared to eternity, it's not a big deal. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. Look at verse 13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Look at verse 14. And above all these, put on charity. And then here's what it says. I love this. Which is the bond of perfectness. Okay, go to 1 Peter 4, 8, and then we'll come back to Colossians. 1 Peter 4, 8. Very similar... Uh, statement here he says and above all things have fervent charity among yourselves look at this next part for charity shall cover the multitude of sins now, i don't know how exactly you want to uh, uh, apply that but here's all i know i want to be forgiven of sins <laughs> and so if i want to be forgiven of sins i'm going to have to use some charity towards others and one of the things you're going to do with charity is you're going to forgive others. Right? One of the things with charity, you're going to try to do good to others and allow them the occasion of doing you wrong. All right? I'm not saying that's right for them to do you wrong, but you don't have to go you know, right every wrong necessarily. You can allow yourself to be defrauded uh, from time to time for the peace and for the sake of all because you have charity. And charity is the bond of perfectness and charity covers a multitude of sins. I'll go back to Colossians. There's a couple more. <clears throat> so, having said all that, he goes on to say, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Verse 19, Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things, your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men's pleasers. Okay, you don't want to just, just whenever they're looking, act like you're, you're a good worker, right? But in singleness of heart, fearing God. You know, if, when you allow yourself to be defrauded, 
You know, you can just think in your heart like, God, are you watching? <laughs> Could, would, would you pay me for that? Because I would really like to get even with this person, but I'd much rather be rewarded in heaven. <laughs> I'd much rather you reward me and you honor me than for me to get, try to gain honor from this situation. You know what I mean? Just allow yourself to do that. Allow yourself to work for others and serve others and please, uh, please others to the best of your ability. Obviously, not always, you're not always going to be able to do that. But to the best of your ability and, let, and do it as unto God so that he can uh, take care of you. He can bless you and reward you. Verse 23, whatsoever ye do. Do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that, the, uh, that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Let God be the one that, that pays back. Let God be the one who gets even with people or whatever. We have to learn to be able to absorb some of that tension when it's there, because it's going to be there. It's going to be there at home. It's going to be there at church sometimes. It's going to be there in the workforce. You know, we don't want to be the ones causing the attention, the, the, the tension. But as Christians, we ought to be willing to absorb some of that tension as well. Hope that makes sense. Let's pray. Father, <clears throat> simple message, short message. But I pray, Lord, that you'll help us to uh, get that picture in our head of not being fathers who would bring tension into the home or add to the tension, not being wives that would uh, do that and bring tension into the home, not being children that would bring tension, but help us strive to reduce the tension at home. It's not only is it better for our health, not only is it going to help us be more productive and pleasing to you and, and get more done and accomplished in life, uh, but also, Lord, it's what you've asked us to do, and we want uh, you to be the one who's pleased. We want to be rewarded by you and not by men. And so we ask that you help us learn this lesson, Lord, apply it where we can, and that you'd be glorified in it. I pray in Jesus' name.